Alrighty, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Serving Nerve, where we talk about whatever we want, and today we're going to be going through the Mr. Beast controversy. We're going to be going through the Mr. Beast controversy, the Dog Pack 404 situation, a little bit of Ava Chris Tyson here and there, and the thing is, I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown on the collection of anarchy and chaos that has ensued thus far. I figure, you know, everybody's throwing out a bunch of content, but it's so much that we need a little bit of a condensed understanding of what's going on. I'm gonna probably miss some things in this video, but I'm going to go through the timeline and kind of like go through some of the stuff that I have before me, but we're just gonna break it down, go through some of this, I'm gonna give my opinion, and also everything in the video is alleged because, uh, you know, everything's alleged. Um, and it's very difficult to gauge who's going to get sued or not, and I prefer to not be one of those people. I'm gonna say everything's alleged regarding this video, but we can kind of gauge some of the things that are, you know, kind of true and kind of not, and maybe true and maybe not. Basically, we're just gonna go through what we can find here and try and see, like, where the truth really lies, because it is a disaster. This entire situation has been a disaster. You know, the first video I actually made talking about this was my only video I made talking about this, and it was mainly in response to the Ava Chris Tyson situation. Now, to kind of break that down a little bit, the Ava Chris Tyson situation, which we already know, is uh, Ava Chris Tyson, or Chris Tyson, the uh, former Mr. Beast employee, now fired, uh, was uh, noted on Discord as, you know, having potentially inappropriate conversations with minors, uh, and also allegedly grooming minors and or getting involved with potential relationships with people who were younger in age. Then, in response to this whole situation once it became nuclear, which I said, hey, Mr. Beast is probably gonna have to respond, Mr. Beast did do a response. Uh, it wasn't that great, but it was a response nonetheless. It was just a Twitter post kind of explaining, hey, I'm uh, doing an internal investigation with a third party and this person no longer works with me. That's the gist of that circumstance. But given the concerns and the opportunities and the fact that this was a very hot topic at the time, this is what I think really perpetuated Dog Pack 404 to make and release this video about Mr. Beast. And the video consists mainly of accusations pertaining to, you know, faking videos, rigging results, having potential human rights concerns for some of the Mr. Beast games, having fake contestants in videos that are actually Mr. Beast's friends, using CGI in dishonest ways, using giveaways and targeting children through those giveaways, having children do specific things to promote Mr. Beast products so that Mr. Beast can make more money without those kids actually seeing a benefit, fake, you know, gambling, gambling scams, things like that, basically weaponizing his younger audience to gain profit. People are also mentioning his candy bar company and how it's super unhealthy, but I think it's kind of besides the point given the circumstances. He did promote his candy bars at one point from what I remember as being a healthier alternative, but a lot of people are also pointing out the opposite situation where they are not particularly be healthy and being marketed to kids. There's a lot of child marketing in this situation, which is also going to get like, you know, the FTC kind of in that mix. So I'm trying to be kind of like, you know, I'm not trying to be super serious when I say this, because we do have to have some level of understanding where if you make a false claim about these kinds of things, or if you kind of have this perception going on and you make this much money on YouTube as Mr. Beast does, you very well could face an issue if you are marketing to kids or perceived and or, you know, promoted as marketing to kids and you have things like the FTC, the, you know, COPPA Act, things like that kind of getting in the way of actually having this situation not become nuclear. So I'm really trying to be alleged with the kid marketing stuff because those accusations can become problematic um, and we don't have a full truth regarding this entire investigation so we don't really know yet. We don't know the results of everything. There are also allegations that Jimmy knew about the, you know, situation with Ava Chris Tyson, the lollipop stuff, you get what I'm saying with that, and also, you know, all the other crap. We don't know what the depth of understanding was, but we have a general idea that he kind of knew what was going on in some capacity, whatever that capacity was. And this Dog Pack 404 video opportunistically drops. And in this video, the guy, you know, the dog pack dude, don't know his actual name, um, is actually kind of like also making jokes, troll commentary throughout the video, which now people are weaponizing against him, like, you know, claiming to be on narcotics and whatnot, uh, which is also great. But the point of this video is it opportunistically placed itself into a specific space of YouTube where during the current controversy and everything else that was going on at the time, it drew in a bunch of people very quickly. Like it's got millions of views now. And that video has a lot of people now perceiving Mr. Beast as a, uh, you know, a piece of human, human garbage, mortal swine. 
Uh, one who feeds off of the financial sums of children's parents, basically. And, uh, yeah, has an audience that is very much children. And the audience being children has been kind of admitted by Jimmy on podcasts before or on online. So this video drops. And the results of this video have left a cease and desist for Dogpack404 regarding his video and the claims that he's making. And he says he's interacting with a lawyer and stuff. But basically, Dogpack404 is facing cease and desists from Mr. Beast's team. And that situation is also perpetuating people to kind of recognize Mr. Beast is coming down hard with a hammer and sickle like a freaking communist in this regard. And uh, taking away the right to speak about it on the basis of NDAs when everything else in the Dogpack404 video is allegedly not breaking an NDA. And more disclosing the human rights concerns and the problems with the Mr. Beast videos that have been put up online. There's also been the alleged doxing of Dogpack 404 and also Mr. Beast employees trying to debunk the video with that going horribly wrong as we have seen in many regards. Mr. Beast at this point has still not made any responses and people are just dogpiling trying to get him to make a response because they need a response. It's bad that there's no response at this point. There needs to be some kind of response. And then outside of that, Mr. Beast just recently put out a new video. It's been massively disliked. It doesn't address any of the situations. And also it has comments and stuff that are obviously being filtered through specific keywords. And we suspect that given the circumstances, a lot of people are making negative commentary on this video, but it is not showing up to the public. And it's kind of funny because I remember seeing memes of people who were going like, when the next Mr. Beast video drops, oh dang, when the next Mr. Beast video drops, and then the video drops, and instead of there being an explanation or, you know, any information that needs to be, you know, given out by Mr. Beast, because this is actually a serious thing that a bunch of people are accusing him of at this point, he just drops his, you know, typical video spielio, I did whatever, 100 days, 100 people, bunkers, blah, blah, blah. And the result now has been that the internet is nuclear. Everybody's trying to interview with Dogpack404. There's an interview with with Ludwig, there are interviews going all around. There are also people giving tons and tons of information as much as possible, like Cam Nuggets, uh, Oompaville did a video, tons of people are just doing tons of videos, basically. Uh, Sensitive Society's doing a few videos, quite a few videos, and then Achito's also doing quite a few videos, and there's just a bunch of YouTubers hopping on this, you know? And it is kind of necessary to keep on bringing this up because we cannot really, at this point, let things go under the rug, but that's the current timeline of stuff. And, you know, I mainly wanted to give you this current timeline so I can give my opinion on the timeline. I know it's not perfect, so pardon that. But my opinion is, and I need a drink for this opinion because it's it's gonna be a long-standing opinion. This is the thing I do, is I just talk about my own perspective on reality. If you know what I'm drinking, it is hard iced tea because I'm hard and I need to cool down. But anyways, my opinion mainly is, starting from beginning to end, the Ava Chris Tyson situation was screwed up and terrible and that person should be completely disavowed. That kind of individual should be denounced in every regard and never be given a platform again, given that they've had interactions with individuals that are inappropriately young for their age. The Dog Pack 404 video, I think, actually was a pretty well-composed video with some concerns that definitely need to be addressed. But at the same time, we have a hard time telling if you know, this individual is telling the truth 100%, doing a clout chase just on the opportunistic basis. I would say that it's more likely that they're not trying to super duper crazily like make tons and tons of money off of it. It could be more born out of like maybe wanting to spite or get clout out of the situation because he's a former Mr. Beast employee. But at the same time, maybe it's just to tell the truth. We really don't know the intentions of the individual. We are not the individual. So we should always give grace in that regard because we obviously don't know the whole situation here and we can't just guess. We have to assume and assuming makes an ass out of you and me. But I personally am kind of on the fence with the Dog Pack 404 video. I think that, you know, there's some jokes in there, there's some witty commentary, but at the same time, it's making some serious accusations, and those accusations need to be treated pretty seriously because they are obviously going after the big boy, YouTube's golden boy, 300 million subscribers amongst multiple channels boy, guy who has an entire, like, company under his finger and a website in his hand, that kind of situation. So you gotta be careful with that. At the same time, with some of the interviews I'm seeing regarding Dog Pack 404, particularly the one I saw with Ludwig, it was cringe all the way through. I think they were both being pretty cringe. Ludwig, I don't know much about the guy, sorry about that. But Ludwig, he's trying to do his journalistic kind of integrity thing, but at the same time, we don't know if he's on Mr. Beast's side or not. So we're trying to at the same time kind of level with that and go like, okay, maybe he's biased, or maybe he's just trying to be a journalist. 
He's asking questions to Dog Pack about narcotic usage and if at the time he was intoxicated during the creation of the video or if he has a history of such because there are jokes about narcotic usage in the video or what. And that's becoming more problematic because then we don't know the integrity of Dog Pack. And then at the same time, Dog Pack is going like, well, my lawyer can only let me say these certain things and I'm not trying to break the NDA. And you know, Ludwig doesn't know what is on the NDA. So he's like, I can't break the NDA and I'm just doing everything in the video because there's some level of evidence, but everything's alleged because there is no evidence because I can't break my NDA and actually say certain things about certain things regarding this video. So he's just like walking on eggshells basically. And he's also kind of just trolling throughout the video. And I'm like, okay, well we need some kind of response. Like why would you go on here just to troll? There's obviously information you need or you need to give out. So what is the point of this? And that's the big thing. It's like, what's the point of that interaction? It might just be to troll. It might just be to get attention. It could be to get clout or it could be to actually try explain yourself or explain that you can't explain yourself by saying that you do not have the ability to explain yourself because of the NDA that you signed. Then when it comes to the Mr. Beast situation, personally, I think that at this point, Mr. Beast has had plenty of time to make some kind of a response, any kind of a response, any acknowledgement of the circumstances, and he hasn't. So given everything, I'm pretty sure he's going to try and bury it. Now, I'm just guessing, maybe he'll have to come out and say something, but I'm pretty sure this boy's going to try and bury this in a 300 million foot pit because there's no way that we can actually bury it at this point. It's gone nuclear. But hypothetically, he's going to try and ride these waves, just like a bunch of other YouTubers who've gotten like canceled in the past. He's going to just try and ride those waves and then keep what audience he can get left because he's already made his money. He makes tons of money on YouTube. He's got a massive empire of YouTube hood. He's YouTube's golden boy, in my personal opinion. Like they want him on here. They get a lot of money from him. They give him a lot of money on YouTube. He is like inserted into this and he's gone mainstream as well. So the amount of fortification at the moment, it's gonna take a lot to really bring this out and kind of make it a thing where it will actually like hurt him. At this point, he's basically, in my opinion, somewhat uncancelable. He can obviously have a soured reputation, bad PR and have no trust or anything like that and whatever, like nobody can trust him and all that. But the thing is, I think he's basically invincible at the moment regarding everything, at least for now, unless something really truly criminal were to come out and there's actually a court case, uh, particularly regarding his contestants. And this is the other thing that I did forget to mention. There are certain contestants that are coming out and explaining the human rights concerns that came out in the Beast games and the Squid Games remake that Mr. Beast made and a lot of the competitions and stuff that they're rigged, that there was insufficient food, water, there were people having potential seizures due to a lack of medication access. There were a lot of issues. There were uh, assaults happening on the, you know, sides with certain contestants, just, you know, attacking other contestants because they wanted to win because there's a lot of money on the line. Allegedly, like all this stuff, obviously we can't prove everything, but there is concern and there are a lot of people coming out saying this. So if there's this many people who are actually proclaiming that there is a legal matter here, that I think is what's gonna really shake up the playing field and create a problem. If there are lawsuits going from, you know, Mr. Beast and the team to Dog Pack 404, and also a bunch of lawsuits coming from people who experienced, you know, inappropriate treatment with the Mr. Beast shows, the games, the videos, and they're going to be filing lawsuits, maybe a massive lawsuit with multiple individuals, we really just don't know, against Mr. Beast. That I think at this point is the only thing that's really gonna shake up the play. It's the legalities of the matter. It's not gonna have anything to do with a soured reputation online. I think we're kind of beyond that point when it comes to subscribers and riding those waves is kind of inevitable and people will probably stick around, which isn't good in my opinion. You know, given the severity of the circumstances and also the lack of response on Mr. Beast's end, I think we are hitting a point where guilt is, I'm not trying to say he's guilty, but the perception of people seeing him as guilty grows every day with a lack of response because it's your silence is your guilt. And guilt by association and not making a statement that you are not guilty basically insinuates that you are guilty. I'm not trying to justify such, I'm just trying to give a level perspective because at the end of the day, I just kind of want to know the truth. I really don't like Mr. Beast a ton. He's just there, but given that he's grown so much and seeing the nuclear warfare that is 
continually smashing through YouTube at the moment. I really want to give my perspective regarding this because I'm seeing people who are really trying to defend him and also just completely destroy him online. And then there are other people who I think are doing a great job with collecting the evidence and trying to show the truth. And I think the number one thing we have to look at is the evidence, the information, the truth, and we need to kind of understand what is actually going on here before we make a full judgment. We also have to pay attention to Dogpack 404 because we have to ask, are these things being stated on a legal basis? Are they not being stated because of some kind of legal circumstance like an NDA? Same thing with contestants. Are they being paid off? Are they being threatened? Are they being bribed? Are they able to say what they need to say because of NDAs? What's going on? Are people actually getting paid from the Mr. Beast videos? That's another one. Is contestants not actually getting paid? Like, there's so much to this, and I'm so sorry that I'm rambling, but it's such an overwhelming sum of information that we actually can't even, like, go through it in one video, which is why I've seen hundreds upon hundreds of videos getting posted hour by hour. Every single day there's a new video from somebody. Every single hour there's a new video from somebody going off about the Mr. Beast situation. And generally speaking, I have no idea, but personally, I don't trust Mr. Beast. I think Dogpack404 is an interesting sort, but I wouldn't just blindly trust him either. I think that he's got some good information, but I want to see where that information takes us. Ava Chris Tyson's obviously X'd out on the mark of, you know, irreversible trash given the disgusting results of that circumstance. But the contestants and the people who were in the Mr. Beast videos are my main concern. Going through the Dog Pack 404 and other ex-employees of Mr. Beast, we need to understand where they're coming from, see what they have to say, and kind of look at all of that combined into what is painting the picture here with the whole Mr. Beast team and currently Mr. Beast himself and what these videos actually are, because there's so much. And I'm saying this is a triangle of damnation. Like we definitely need to look at everything and hear the stories every single day to know what's going on. But even so, I personally have no faith in the the comeback for Mr. Beast, nor the destruction. I suspect the reputation for Mr. Beast is forever soured and should be if such is not resolved and a very well explained public statement is not given. And outside of that, even if it's the case, given everything we've seen thus far, is there any coming back from this? I really don't know. I think the result is actually gonna be, ironically, watching this cookie crumble. This cookie that's been given out to you every time you subscribe. But this cookie, it's gonna be crumbling and we're gonna wait and see what's left of it uh, throughout this sequence of time. And eventually it either is going to blow over if people get bored or the videos stop doing well on YouTube or if it becomes algorithmically unfavorable or whatever with YouTubers and or it'll blow over if responses are properly made. And even so, I don't know what will happen regarding any of these matters, but I think the next step, given how much is on the line here for everybody, and mainly Dogpack404, the you know previous contestants and the people who are claiming victimization regarding the Mr. Beast you know, games, the Squid Games, the circumstances, the videos, not getting paid, whatever the case is, and also Mr. Beast himself, there's so much on the line that the next step I think is going to be lawsuits, legalities, lawyers. This is going to start getting really big. And I have a pretty big idea. I have a pretty big idea that if it comes out that Mr. Beast is allegedly marketing to children, the FTC is going to get in on it too. I'm just saying, maybe that's like crazy, but that's just my opinion. I don't really know, but I think that things are going to go in a more legal direction and in a more naughty naughty situation and government entities are going to also start playing their hand at this to get a piece of this delicious content pie and rightly so if it is right um and you know obviously i'm not trying to make any false claims i really don't know who's right and wrong i just think that we shouldn't blindly trust people and also we should not blindly trust youtubers no matter who they are how big they are or what they do on youtube no matter how much we like certain videos of theirs content of theirs we thought they were genuine or we didn't. We never should blindly trust YouTubers. That goes for me. That goes for any other YouTuber you see online. That goes for Mr. Beast. That goes for the YouTuber that you like that only has like 10 subscribers. It really is the case. I hope you all do well regarding this matter and don't just like blindly fall into these patterns of like standing for your YouTubers because we're really not worth it. And I'm saying we, but I'm barely a YouTuber at this point. So I'm not trying to like weaponize that either. YouTubers in general, no matter how big or small, we're just people on the internet. So I really hope you all have the wit to not just like blindly look up to YouTubers and think, 
well, this person has a lot of subscribers or they make these really cool videos or something like that. And so I'll blindly follow them. You know what I mean? I just don't think you should blindly trust YouTubers or treat them like heroes or anything like that. Most of us are trash. I really just encourage you guys to all think for yourselves. Think for yourselves and you'll all do well. And also just pay attention to what's going on. We don't know exactly what's going on yet, but I would say don't stand anybody until you find the truth. I'd say also listen to what everybody has to say and then see where we go from there. But yeah, that's the video. Tell me what you think in the comments below my people and what is your opinion of this whole situation? I'm not gonna give millions and millions of updates on this matter. I'm just gonna give them here and there uh, when the information becomes so psychotic and nuclear that we really just have to, you know, explain the gist of what's going on at the moment. And also, if Mr. Beast makes a response, we will actually go through that video and check it out. So yeah, that's the video. Tell me what you think in the comments below my people and I will see you all next time. I hope you all enjoyed. It has been lovely. Slater.